study some interesting topic at the same time bit boring topic because this topic uh, this session will be entirely theoretical so uh, it's a bit uh, boring session so anyways uh, today i'm going to cover the java keywords the java class libraries the lexical issues white spaces identifiers literals comments and separators okay guys so let's begin uh, with the lexical issues so what are lexic lexical issues uh now that you have seen several short java programs by this time if you have watched uh, the uh, video from my uh, i mean right from the first tutorial then it is time to more formally describe atomic elements of java java programs are a collection of white spaces identifiers literals comments operators separators and keywords so the operators are described in the i'll be describing in the next uh, videos uh, in detail and also i have covered in short in my previous videos as well uh, yeah that's it with the lexical issues so i will be covering now white spaces so uh, java is a free form language this means that you do not need to follow any special identification rules for instance the example program could have been uh, written all on one line or any other strange way you felt like typing it uh, as long as there was at least one white space character between each token that was not already delineated by an operator or a separator so in java white space in okay i will tell you in simple words that is white space is nothing but it is a space or a tab or a new line just keep in mind okay i'll repeat in java white space is a space a tab or a new line so next is the identifier so identifiers are used to name the things such as uh, you can name the classes the variables the methods all oh, okay keep in mind so next time whatever naming you're uh, doing it comes under the identifiers okay so identifiers are used to name the things okay such as classes variables and methods and identifier may be any descriptive sequence of uppercase and lowercase letters numbers or the underscore and dollar sign characters as well so the dollar sign character is not intended for general use so they must not uh, begin with a number less uh, they must be uh, i mean they be confused with the numeric literal again java is a case sensitive so value that is capital value with a capital uh, v a l u v is different identifier than a value with small letters v a l u v okay so some examples i have shown you here that is so you have a b g temp or count or a4 or dollar test okay these all are the identifiers so identifiers name include uh, i mean uh, the invalid ones i have shown in the second uh, row you can see that two count high hyphen temp not slash okay these are i mean uh, naming cannot, cannot be done in this way so the correct ways you can see avg temp i mean the way i have taken observe it carefully and the count and a4 and the dollar test see the way i have taken them uh so uh, and uh, i'd also like to tell you that uh, beginning with jdk 8 the use of underscore by itself as an identifier is not recommended so uh, it's better you avoid that so next is the literals a constant value in java is created by using a literal representation of it for example here are some literals i have shown you that is 100 98.6 and x this is a test so left to write you can see the first literal specifies an integer the next is a floating point value the third is a character constant and the last is a string so a literal can be used anywhere a value of its type is allowed okay i hope you understood the literals and uh, next is comments i have already covered much of uh, comments in each of my topic but here is a brief one so that um, yeah uh, as mentioned there are three types of comments uh, defined by java you have already seen uh, the single line and the multi line and the third type is the documentation comment this type of comment is used to produce an html file that documents you the program so the documentation comment begins with slash and double asterisk and ends with single asterisk and a slash the so documentation comments are explained in the appendix 
I am sorry I used the wrong verb anyways so next are the separators in Java there are few characters that are used as separators the most commonly used separator in Java is the semicolon as you have seen it is used to terminate statements okay the semicolon uh, the separators are I have shown them here that is you can see the symbol the name here parenthesis what parenthesis used it's used to contain the lists of parameters in a method definition and invocation also used for defining precedence in expressions containing expressions in control statements and surrounding cast type so you can have a look here you can pause it or I'll just read them once so listen carefully and watch the screenshot okay so next we have is the curly braces what we call it as it's used to contain the value of automatically initialized arrays also used to define a block of code for classes methods and local scopes so next we have is the brackets used to declare array types also used when uh, dereferencing array values and next is the most commonly used that is semicolon it terminates the statements okay all technical lines in Java are ended with a semicolon and next one is a comma comma separates consecutive identifiers in a value declaration also used to chain statements together inside for a inside a for statement okay I will tell you once more that is it separates the consecutive identifiers whatever identifiers are there it separates them uh, for example in the variable declaration and also it is used to chain statements together inside a for loop for statement for example uh, you go on adding like a comma comma a word comma a comma word so you can chain like that so next one is the full stop also known as period used to separate package names from sub packages and classes also used to separate a variable or a method from a reference variable okay so double colons okay the colons is used to create a method or constructor reference it was added in JDK 8 I mean it was added by JDK 8 so yeah the next one is the Java keywords um, okay before that I would uh, yeah the separators I forgot to tell you mm, no that's it yeah so coming to the Java keywords there are 50 keywords currently defined in Java and uh, these keywords combine the syntax of the operators and separators from the foundation so you can see here I mean the words the keywords I have already taken we have the abstract and we have assert and uh, we have boolean break byte case catch car class const continue default do double else enum extends final finally float for go to if implements import instance of int interface long native new package private protected public return short static okay so these are the fixed java keywords which we have until now okay so um yeah i would like to tell something about keywords so the keywords cannot be used as an identifiers first point to remember just they cannot be used as a names of the variable for a variable class or a method so these keywords keep them in mind you cannot uh, use them to name the variables class or methods so the keyword const and go to are reserved but not used so in the early days of Java several other keywords were reserved for possible future use However, the current specifications for Java defines only the keywords which I have shown you in the table which is in front of you. So in addition to the keywords, Java reserves the following. I mean, the, uh, it has the true, false, null. These are the values defined by Java. You may not use these words for the names of the variables, classes and so on. Yeah, it was that's it with the Java keywords. Next we have Java libraries. So what are the Java class libraries? Uh, the sample programs which I have shown you in the previous uh, videos contain print ln print so as mentioned these methods are available through system dot out that is system is a class 
predefined by Java that is automatically included in your programs and in the larger view the Java environment relies on several built-in classes libraries that contain many built-in methods that provide support for such uh, things that is input output string handling networking and graphics so the standard classes also provide support for a graphical user interface ui thus java as a totality is a combination of the java language itself plus its standard classes as you will see the class libraries provide much of the functionality that comes with the java so indeed part of becoming a java programmer is learning to use the standard java classes okay so now i guess yeah, i don't have anything much to explain uh that's it with all the contents which we had in the first slide so that's it guys before we end this video i would like to tell you that thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and if you have any doubt don't forget to let me i mean don't forget to update in the comment section below i'm always waiting to address it so always keep practicing guys practice makes man for perfect so let's meet up in our next video and that's it guys thanks bye bye